Hi, I'm Wendy Stapleton and welcome to Rockdown. In 1956, the Thunderbirds were formed, a group of incredibly talented young musicians. They took the rock and roll industry in Australia by storm. Just recently, they were inducted into the Age Music Victoria Hall of Fame and well overdue, I might say. Would you please welcome the original member, Mr. Murray Robertson. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Very nice to be here. Thank you. <laughs> now, when I say the original, of course, you, you can reel off the, name of, the names of the people in the band, um, starting with Harold Frith, who's famous and still, still doing stuff around town. Yes, um, Harold was the leader. In 1956, I met him at a um, social thing in Strathmore, somewhere I think it was. Um, I met him and Laurie Bell was the guitar player, the next one that came together. Prior to that, Harold had been playing at um, parties and stuff with other, other people. But it got serious when Laurie, and we were going to play jazz initially. But then this rock and roll thing happened and it was like a revolution. And in, in all sorts of uh, music that came out of America, it was associated with dance like the swing area and big, big bands and jitterbug and jive and stuff. Well, rock and roll just took off with rock around the clock and blackboard jungle. And um, it was like a revolution. So any hall that held more than 200 people and you could dance on the floor and it had a stage that a band could play on all around Melbourne, there were just thousands of teenagers dancing to this music. And most of it was stuff they were hearing on the radio. The, disc jockeys like Stan Rofe had a lot to do with the Thunderbird's success by pushing our recordings when we made them. Um, he provided us with a lot of input because he had this arrangement with a Qantas pilot used to fly in these piles of 45... Um, like singles. Seven inch uh, singles. And we used to sift through them at 3KZ Studios on a Sunday morning and just sort of pick out stuff that we thought was worth playing. And, but. Um, and rock and roll was pretty new until you guys started sort of really... Well, it, 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 the pressure from the music that was played that was come from America, that's where it really started. And, and people just demanded to hear it, which is we spent most of our time in the early days um, just keeping up with what people wanted to hear, uh, which is what they heard on the radio, which is Chuck Berry and Fats Domino and all those artists that came out of Presley and all those artists that came out of America from 1955 onwards. And, and you, you were all kids. Yeah, I was 17. Peter Robinson, of course, who, Peter Robinson, who then the went bass player, on to form The Strangers. Later on became the leader of The Strangers. The interesting story about Peter, when he first started with the band, or not long after, I used to, I had a, this little standard car that I used to drive, and I used to pick, pick Peter up from his house. And we, I pulled up there one day, and all his stuff was out on the front lawn. I said, what's going on, Pete? He says, my mother threw me out for playing the devil's music. <laughs> I said, oh, OK. Joined the club, you know, so... And he would have been a baby as well. Yeah, he was the same age as yeah, I was. Yeah. Yeah. All kids. Yeah. Um, so, look, I can't... I, ha I have to look at this because there were quite a few people in your band. Yes. Because you uh, had the, the uh, horn sections, the well, whole, whole bit. Yes, yeah. We, it changed a bit. We had one, two and three saxophone players together at any one stage. Um, well, I'd start with Harold, of course, who yeah, Harold we've interviewed and, and before Laurie on Bell Rockdown. was the original guitar player. Murray, yourself, myself, Laurie Bell, yeah, and, Henry and, Bors. And, and, and uh, Peter Robinson and the Henry Bors. On sax. Laurie Bell was replaced by Charles Gould. I've got Charles Gould here. And Gordon. Peter was, ch was replaced by Gordon Onley, who was the bass player during the 60s. Graham sort of. Lyle, who went on to yeah. become the musical director of and it uh, just, it amazes, Don Lancho. Yeah, well, it, it amazes me. It, it, become a, it became a, a collection of musicians that went on to, to make a substantial contribution to Australian music. Graham Lyle was the musical director of the Don Lane Show on Channel 9. He was a director at the College of Whopper. West yeah, Australian Perth, Performing yeah. Arts, and he's now um, course director at um, James Morrison's Academy in Mount Gambier. Gambier. He's still, um, still Tony, Buchanan. Tony Buchanan, yeah. yeah. Tony Buchanan was a sax player in the group for quite some time. He was a lead soloist with the Daly Wilson Big Band. 
which was, I've got a record at home on a 12 inch album called Live at the Cell Block in Sydney. Of this wild bunch of blokes who just blew their brains out when they were young kids. It's one of the best, rec if you ever hear this, it's one of the best recordings ever made in Australia. What's it called? Live at the Cell Block, the Daly Wilson Band. It's a live recording of a 20 piece brass band and it's just out of this world. Anyway, that's Tony Buchanan. Charles Gould was um, a studio musician for 40 years. And Colin also, Cook. Also, yeah, Colin. Colin, he ended up, he played sax for a while, but he ended up being a solo singer mm -hmm. mainly. That was his main thing. But um, Charles Gould was also the um, guitar player with the ABC show band for 17 years. So everybody, so as I said in the intro, everyone was incredibly talented. Even at that young age, there were amazing musicians. Because yeah. as you said, uh, growing up around jazz, most, most of you were very, very well um, educated in yeah. correct yeah, music. Yeah, pretty well. It didn't, sort of, music. It, it didn't yeah. sort of come out of just, oh, I think rock and roll, oh, we'll play that. I mean, my introduction to modern music, I was um, a classical musician. I did classical training for seven years. But then I went and saw the Benny Goodman story. <laughs> Anybody seen the movie, The Benny Goodman Story? It was swing, big band swing jazz, and it just you know, caught me like crazy. I couldn't give it up. So that was the start and, of and it. And then, then um, Harold and, Lo and Laurie and I were sat around in our homes and played jazz music a bit. And like I said before, this, then this rock and roll thing hit, and oh, we'll have to get a bit of this. So <laughs> who, who thought of the name, The Thunderbirds? Harold named it after the Ford Thunderbird motor car. Thought there would be it? some connection there to cars or whatever. Not, not to be confused with the puppets, you know. <laughs> I think we, was, we were before them. I think them, that was actually, a little you know? bit later. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, they copied our notes. So not only, um, look, you were the busiest band or one of the busiest bands in Melbourne. Yes. Um, not only did you uh, arrange your own music and play instrumentals, but you also started backing all of the young pop stars that were, were coming up around the time? Uh, yeah, these dancers, I mean, the, the, the one that brings, the, that I'm most familiar with, or and I have the most memory of, is the Earl's Court venue, which was on the Upper Esplanade in St Kilda. And at one stage, the Thunderwoods were playing at that one venue five times a week. Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, and Sunday night, every week. And on Saturday night, there were 1,200 people in this place. And it got to be so well known that, that Players who were working at um, Festival Hall, visiting overseas artists, and Johnny O'Keefe's band, the DJs, they used to come to Earl's Court after the Festival Hall gig and jam. And, and get up. And oh, jam. it was great. We had the, the ability, the collective ability, to hear a song and play it. It didn't really matter what it was. In fact, uh, out of that came our gig with the tour for Roy Orbison, Dion DiNucci, Jack Scott and Ray Peterson. And um, they, they just turned up cold, no pre-introduction to what they were going to do. And because a lot of their music was played on the radio, Charles Gould wrote out the music for all their stuff. And they came onto the stage at Festival Hall to um, rehearse and they were just amazed. We just played their stuff, their songs. Okay, we're going to take a short break. When we come back I'd like to also ask you about some of the young um, artists, Melbourne yeah. artists, that uh, auditioned to yeah. sing in your band. Yeah. A few people that I think we may know. We'll be back yeah. very, very soon with Murray Robertson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to Rockdown. My special guest is the original keyboard player from the Thunderbirds, Mr Murray Robertson. Thank you, Wendy. Nice to be back again. Hey. We were talking about uh, the fact that uh, the Thunderbirds became like probably the most popular band. I know there were a couple of other bands around town that also did, used to back a lot of um, artists as well. There were the Premiers, is that yes. correct? Yes. So there were a few, but the Thunderbirds yeah. were really it. Yeah, I think, I think um, the collective ability attracted people and singers to us, the fact that we could do what they you wanted. You could do to, anything. They, yeah, what they wanted to do. And so as you said before, um, you know, uh, 
Peter went on to uh, form The Strangers and also become like the uh, arranger and musical director for a lot of the pop shows. Yeah, um, yes, and he was also part of the um, backing group for The Go Show, all of The Go, the go Show. All of The Go the Show, that's right. did all the backing for The Go Show with, now, with other musicians. Yeah. Um, a young girl, a 15-year-old girl evidently came up and auditioned. Yeah. Just look at the oh, look yeah, on his face. Really <laughs> he knows what's coming, you don't. Yeah. Um, a young girl I'm auditioned and she said, unfortunately, I got the job and that was, of course, the yes. beautiful Marcy Jones, yeah. who has been Murray's partner for... 25 years. <laughs> 25 years. 25 years. Um, but she was... She was 15 years old and, and her and her girlfriends came to the Canterbury Ballroom and um, her girlfriend's um, Malcolm Arthur was singing there. Yes. And um, her girlfriend said, our girlfriend can sing, can she sing with the band? And he said, no, but we're auditioning for girl singers next Saturday, she can come along and audition, which she did. Um, I think she... Who's Sorry Now? A couple of Connie Francis songs she yeah. sing. Anyway, she got the job. And that was her first introduction into professional singing. And she was 15, and that was the beginning of her career. And it didn't stop from, from that day on for Marcy either, did it? No. Yeah, who else? Um, did Norm come in? Yeah, well, the first time I met Normie Rowe was on the stage of Preston Town Hall in a talent quest, and he was 14. I can't remember what he sang. Did he but, win? But I don't even remember that. <laughs> but I, I can remember that Stan Rofe had a lot to do with getting him there. As did Stan have a lot to do with... Um, so many what? people that we've talked to on this show have, have mentioned how important Stan Rofe was. Yeah. Stan Rofe, of course, was a, a DJ on, was it 3KZ? 3KZ and 3UZ. And 3UZ later, later, I remember that. But he was um, an amazing person in as much yeah. as he really looked after Australian talent. Is and it, uh, he looked out for, as you said, uh, you all had uh, records coming in from overseas and Stan was one of the people that did that all the time and he'd ring artists up and say, I think I've found something that you'd yeah, like. Yeah, he did, yeah. But any, anybody could go in there and they knew they could go in there and present him with a record that was locally made and he just never, his enthusiasm for local music was just overwhelming. You know, he just got into it and pushed it for all he was worth. And he was responsible for a lot of the Thunderbird success in, in the rec records we made, which were in the most part instrumentals because what you spoke of, the, the musicality within the band didn't allow us just to play backing music for singers but we took a large number of jazz standards at the time, the theme from Peter Gunn being one of them, and turned them into a rock, a rock thing. thing. Um, because we rearranged them and played them for our instrumental setup. And um, uh, I was shown a record before um, in the September issue of 19, the 1977 September issue of Rolling Stone magazine. This album, which is a, an album of Thunderbirds instrumentals on W and G, was included in the top 100 album, Australian albums of all time. Oh, up until when? Yeah. 1977. Which is a while ago now. Congratulations to you all on your induction oh, into it's the. It's a great uh, honour, especially with those who've been um, included in this year. Who was? Who the, else was inducted? ACDC, John Farnham, The Seekers. Bill Armstrong, the recording engineer, the Palais Theatre as an identity, the Sunbury Festival as an identity. It was just a, it was the And tenth, the Thunderbirds. And the Thunderbirds. It was, a, it was the 10th year of this award. <laughs> and it was great. Congratulations. Yeah. Would you very please thank Murray Robertson. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Rockdown. Of course, now is my favourite segment of the whole show because we have the gorgeous Susie Pinder, who has been definitely more than out and about. She's been travelling. You've been on the road. Oh, when? Hello. Where have you been? <laughs> I have been on the annual um, road trip, surfing road trip with my hubby and, and sons. So tell us about 
Oh, it's not a new project of yours or all the people here at Musicland, but we've started doing some, not talent quests, what would you call them? Well, it, it, it's like the old-fashioned days when there was new faces and everyone got a, a bit of a go on telly. And I was at the industry luncheon today um, that we go to and we talked about this. Normie Rowe was up and he was talking about, you know, this, this lack of places now for you to actually showcase your talent uh, on television. Um, well, so there's hardly anything. There's nothing. He was saying there was something like, I, I don't know, it was ridiculous. It was like 100 spots a week on television for musicians. And now there might be one or two, if you're lucky, the morning shows. And I, I sort of got up and sort of uh, had a little bit of a say because I was talking about here at Musicland, they run Band Wars, which is really, really a, a great show. And it's really important. Really important. And Band Wars, it gives every single artist, it doesn't matter who you are, you could be, be 100, you could be 8, if you can put together a show and come up here, you get to not only play, but you get to be on television, so it's on Fox Aurora. And we have guest judges and, you know, the likes of Ken Murdoch, uh, he, he and I were guest judges, Anita and I have been guest judges. And this is Australia-wide and it gives everybody a chance to be on the tally. Um, tell me about a, a band called The Dangerous Curves. Well, I think they're named after me because I've got some Dangerous Curves happening right now. <laughs> but they, they were on Band Wars and I, I think they were in the top three, I can't remember now. Cathy's telling me yes. They, you look and you go, OMG, this is Bon Jovi. You know, the, the guitarist looks like a young Richie Sambora. He's got the hair. I had hair envy, the rock and roll look. I, I thought the lead singer actually looked a bit like um, Daniel Johns from Silverchair, you know. Yeah. And they tore up the stage and they were real rock and rollers. And I think they're from Geelong and they were something else. And that, they were discovered because where are we going to see our rock bands now? You know, it's all these music festivals are doof doof and, you know, let's bang our heads to this techno stuff, which there's a place for that, I'm not saying. But we need a place for good rock and roll, up and coming rock and roll. So where are they playing? Dangerous Curves have been playing everywhere. They've, they've played here, they're around Geelong. I don't know where they're playing right now, um, but you, you know, look them up. Facebook will find them, but um, we got a bit of an interview with them. Let's have a look. I want have to a see. Look. Bon Jovi. Oh yeah, Richie Sambora, check him out. Oh, hey, it's Susie here out and about for Rockdown TV and I'm down at Eddie's band room and I am absolutely stoked because I have found Dangerous Curves and made are they dangerous. Welcome guys. Yeah. Hey. Thanks. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Doing a good gig tonight? Thanks mate, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Rocking it out out there? Yeah, uh, put a uh, bit of strain on the voice so I'm trying not to talk too much. Yeah, <laughs> well this is not going to help is it, eh? <laughs> Now, I first met you guys over at Band Wars, and it was a really um, amazing experience to hear you play over there, and you got through the ranks, and you were finalists. Um, how was that experience for you? Oh, it was really good. Like, yeah, because uh, it was our first gig, and that uh, gave us a bit of confidence and uh, good, good exposure as well. So, yeah, it was great. You bloody looked the part. Yeah, I, I think I told you it, it was really difficult <laughs> as a judge not to look and think, Richie Sambora? Oh, cheers, yeah. He's one of my all-time heroes, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he looked good. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> He's still all right. You're still yeah. right, Rich, just yeah. in case, yeah? Now, who inspired you guys, you know, with the rock music that you're doing? Um, we get into, like, a lot of, like, the 80s, you know, LA scene, strip, hair metal, glam rock. Yeah. Uh, but I also enjoy like old Aussie rock as well, so yeah. you probably tell in the vocals. I think I told you um, over at Band Wars that you reminded me of um, Daniel Johns uh, on stage. You got that young Daniel Johns look when you're on stage. You really move about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I suppose, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who would you listen to when you were growing up? Um, oh, well, my old lady brought me up on Cold Chisel, ACDC, but then she liked Loverboy and... Motley Crue and Aerosmith, yeah. Some mighty fine pedigree there, mm. hey? Yeah. Mm. yeah How long you been gigging? <coughs> um, since March, isn't it? Is it May. March? May. Yeah, May. May. Just May. May. Was the first Band Wars competition gig? Yeah, and that was our first performance. Get out of town! I didn't realise that. Yeah. 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 Should have spoken up because you mightn't have been judged as harshly, eh? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Cheers, because you're bloody good. Ah, oh, cheers. Yeah. 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 I really enjoyed the performance. Who, who do you listen to growing up? A uh, bit of everything: Guns and Roses, Motley. Yeah, I can just see that. Standards. Yeah, just the standards. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So you got Pete from Magic Brands managing you now. Uh, I guess that there's going to be some big things happening for you 
from here on. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah hopefully. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where do you? Where would you like to see yourself? To be able to play music and not have to work yeah. anymore, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do what I love doing. Bloody day job's a killer, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, bloody killer. Yeah. Yeah. But we make it work, so... Yeah. yeah, and I think you were from Belmont, were you? Down Geelong yeah, way? Geelong. Is that right? Yeah. So what's the scene like down at Geelong? Uh, pretty crap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mostly, uh, I think it's fairly punky and stuff like that, so... Yeah, we don't fit in anywhere, but we're going to make it happen, so... No, <laughs> you don't have to fit in. They have to fit in with you yeah, guys. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, you got so, uh, you got a bit of a website that we can direct our, our viewers to. Uh, yeah, we've got one in the making at the yeah, moment. Yeah, we're building it at the moment. Yep. Um, but at the moment, it's just a Facebook page, which is Dangerous Curves Rock. Now, who who was she with the Dangerous Curves? Where'd you get the name for the band? Uh, can we come and up come up with it from reading too many Playboys? <laughs> and who is who? Yeah, over yeah. here. Yeah. Too many playboys. Can't be too many playboys, can nah, they? No, never too many. Yeah. <laughs> Just enjoy them. <laughs> Good on you. We need a few dangerous curves. Yeah, yes. yeah. So where are you gigging from here on? Wouldn't have a clue. Oh, where are we next? All over Melbourne, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we've just done a K-Rock competition where we're being played on the radio yeah. and um, they're going to be putting on like $5,000 of air time for, for the winner of the artist. So there's that was out of 50 bands and we're in the finals for that. I think that we're going to wind it up now, but it's just so good to see a good rock band and keep your eye out for this band because you're going to see them and they're, they're dangerous curves. I love that. I don't like too many skinny chicks, you know, like the one with a bit of meat. So yeah, keep an eye out for these guys because they're going to be big and you heard it here first on Rockdown TV. So thanks, thanks guys. And an awesome gig tonight. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Rockdown over now. While uh, we were watching those gorgeous boys, <laughs> lovely little boys, um, <laughs> hey, <laughs> it's not bad, eh? Um, Susie was actually telling us that uh, now, what's the, the guy's name? He's a, Peter a manager. Yeah, Peter, Peter Hoffman manages him. He has Magic Brands. He's actually also worked as a, a judge on Band Wars. Okay and has done some amazing stuff. So he's picked up some of the acts that he's seen along the way, uh, Sisters Doll and these guys, uh, together they are phenomenal. No drugs, you, drugs you're out. If you're gonna drink in moderation, but you don't drink on a gig or before a gig. Oh. No, <laughs> he's got... <laughs> Give wine, please. But he actually gets them to work. It's and harsh. <laughs> it is harsh. <laughs> but he's got them touring, he's got them driving up and down the coast, he's, he's got them flying in and out of Adelaide and doing stuff. And they are doing the hard yards and, I, and it's really nice to see because I, I was getting worried, I, I love rock and roll. And to see bands like them, like Sisters Doll, some of the yeah, other bands. Yeah, they're really giving out everything they got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they can be corrupted. After the gig. I'll give it a shot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. <don't> you? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear me, I never change. Um, anyway, Sue's so beautiful as usual to see you. You too, darling. You get the good gigs. Yeah, that wasn't bad, wasn't it? Yes, I think yeah. I'm going to have to join you on the um, out and about little it. sessions coming up very shortly. But would you please thank the gorgeous Susie Pender. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, darling. We'll be back soon. Well, welcome back to Rockdown. Now, we're going to have a lot of fun with these guys. My next guests formed their band in high school. It was called Cloud Nine. They were babies. A year later, they changed their name to Taste, and the rest of it was history in the rock scene in the uh, early 80s. Is that correct? Uh, or? Yes, yes. I haven't even introduced you. Would you please welcome from Taste? Kenny Murdoch and Michael Tortini. Close enough. Michael Gemini. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's right. Right. I love that because that was your original stage name when you were a kid, wasn't it? Well, it was, and um, a lot of the uh, Taste fans decided they'd worked out that it wasn't uh, Gemini, it was Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> so you tried to get away from Tortoni and they still make you a Tony. <laughs> Gemini. Well, welcome, guys, because. Um, uh, something very exciting. You're reformed. 
Yeah. You yeah. have an album coming out. Yeah. It's, well, actually, it's it's, it's out. out. It's out. Yes. Life on Earth. It's Life called, on yeah. Earth. Yeah. Um, let's just go back to Taste, uh, because I worked in a band um, called Wind in the Rockets with Joey Demented. That's right. <laughs> I'm the only person that's allowed to call him Joey Demented. That's right. Joey Amenta, an amazing musician. You're mm. all amazing musicians. Virgil Donati, who yes. have I left out? No, that's it. Virgil, that was it. Michael, it's just the four of us. Yeah. That's right. um, reading about the early days of, of taste and uh, having already amazing established musicians come to your gig, especially in Bondi. Evidently all the guys from all yeah. the bands came down to see you. And someone commented that you did the tightest set that they'd ever experienced in a live gig, and I think it was a Bondi Lifesavers or something like that. Well, it's 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 possible. I think I think we, we actually recorded some of that gig. Yeah, actually, we did record uh, at Bondi at the at the swap. Yeah. Um, uh, look, I, 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 it's hard for me to quote, but I, I, yeah, I agree with whoever said that. Who was it? Was <laughs> well, it Robin, Robin Riley. Was it Rob Riley. It probably was. <laughs> Rock and uh, roll. He loved that. Rob. Yeah. Well, every, everybody did. Up. Jimmy Barnes. Yeah. Um, uh, the guys from Sherbet. Yeah, yeah. Well, we toured with all those guys. We did tours with Hush and Skyhooks and Sherbet and uh, Cold uh, Chisel. Cold Chisel. Yeah. yeah, we did lots of tours. When you talk about those bands, the funny thing is that in actual fact, you were on Countdown before them. Well, yeah. As Cloud Nine, we were the, the first band on Countdown ever. On the pilot. On the pilot. Ever. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> You've never seen it because it hadn't been released, but uh, they don't. Uh, well, you know they don't keep any of the old stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah, we were the first band. Us and Linda George was on it too. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Was that with and, and Johnny Farnham compared it? Wow. And we were Johnny Farnham's backing band in Cloud Nine when we left school. That's how we left school because we could work six nights a week. Yeah, we worked we with Johnny Farnham. Farnham. Didn't go back to school. Like yeah. <laughs> so we. we uh, I wouldn't go back to school either, Michael. If I were you. Oh, we, we were working five, six nights a week. We used to work at the George Hotel in St Kilda, which was a rough place in those days. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> but it was. It was very rough. You would. You wouldn't be going there then. Um, very rough place. So we learned. I lived lot. there. Well, you live there <laughs> now, but you don't. You, in those days, the, the, yeah. they used to pour the jugs back into the into the barrels. So the next night, they would you like a beer? Go. <laughs> and, they used, yeah. and they used to have special shows upstairs. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah we got sick of going upstairs to see the... The special shows. The dancers. Go-go's. <laughs> yeah. Now, they were fabulous days, and we were talking to Susie Pinder before about the fact that um, we were very lucky, especially the 70s and 80s. When you say to people these days that you could work, you could work seven nights a week, and you could do doubles. Yeah, you could. That's Weekends, true. you could do... Uh, Saturday Arvo, early show Saturday night, late show like at Kingston yeah, Rock that's or right, yeah. you you know, Bombay Blinders, Rock. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so lucky uh, and very hard now for kids to get their chops because you know all their stagecraft together. Yeah. You yeah, know, well, they, their, their dreams is to play in a cover band that, that works. That, that's what guitarists think is, is uh, successful. So to be in a band like we were, we often talk about it now with the new album, that you know, it's a different world, and to, to get airplay and TV and stuff, you really have to attack it differently. But in those days, it seems like we just put something out, and you went on and got played on the radio, and you, you could ring up the radio station at night and say, "Would you play the B side?" And they go, "Yeah, yeah, no worries." And the guy would, play, you know, yeah. that, that never happens. It was just fabulous, fabulous days. Well, the thing is that um, you guys were an amazing band, and technically, all of you amazing musos, performers. Um, the fact is that when Taste split up, you all successfully went in, stayed in music, yeah. uh, but went off on your own careers. Joey, of course, went on to play with uh, Russell Morris. Everyone. Everyone. Uncanny X-Men, everyone. Everyone, yeah, 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 played with everyone. You have had the most ongoing, <laughs> amazing career. Yeah. Um, probably the busiest man in, uh, in, in the Victorian music industry, I'd say. Well, I'm very lucky to be working as much as I do. Well, you're talented. Yeah, so but luck, uh, you know. Oh, you. you are, Kim. There's no luck. There's no, it's not just luck, it's talent. And Michael, of course, you were very busy running a fabulous place called... Bennett's Lane. Bennett's Lane. Jazz, Premier Jazz Club. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was so broken hearted after Taste that I didn't want to join another rock band. Um, and Virgil had gone off to, to LA yep. to, to study jazz and, and, you know, he's kind of huge huge drummer internationally now 
Um, and I had this dream of opening up a music venue, a jazz club, and, uh, and did in the very early 90s and, um, and has, have, have been running it ever since, almost a quarter of a century. <laughs> now, it recently closed. So uh, no, um, I sold it. Yeah, you sold it. Yep, and uh, it's actually operating at the moment. Oh, it still Again, is. Yeah, I, I mean, I did close it at the end of June 30, um, but the new owners um, have reopened it. And what about yourself? Are you going to start another little venture or have you had enough of that? No, 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 no. Um, I'll, I'll still be active. Um, I'm working on a few things. I, I'm still the artistic director of the Melbourne International Jazz Festival. Oh. And, and that keeps, <laughs> keeps me quite busy. How come we're not on it? Um, well, I'll work on it. I'm, jazz. I'm <laughs> Two words. I was waiting for that. I was waiting for that. <laughs> jazz winning. I'm yeah. proking it. We can do a jazz set, a taste yeah, jazz set. Taste jazz. Um, but, you know, um, but for 2016, next year, I really want to spend a bit of time on taste and, and spend some time with, with the guys, and particularly Ken. Um, it's an exciting project and uh, it deserves some attention. Well, it is 2016 and the album's out. Mm -hmm. That's uh, right. Singles? Uh, the single... It's an old-fashioned sort of word these well, days, yeah, isn't it? But the, the featured song the featured is song. Um, I Am God, it's called. Uh, written from the perspective of what if God is uh, not as benevolent as we all think he is, and perhaps he's just having fun, maybe we're his sins game. And so every time there's a disaster and people go, you know, there must be a good reason that he's let this happen. Maybe he's just rolling a dice and going, ah, it's good fun. Now, it's quite a cynical song. Did uh, you write it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All my songs are about death and <laughs> misery. And, yeah, rape. There's really? Girl, yeah, you wouldn't think that when you actually sort of just see you doing your gigs. And well, that's, that's how I get it out. Or when you're night. someone's next door neighbour and you drop, no, that's drop right. in at two o'clock in wow. the morning. I noticed you locked that fence, that door. You blocked it. <laughs> this is true. We picked it. We yeah. actually lived next door to each other. It was Come a funny on. little setup. It was a corridor, or what do you call it? Sideway. A sideway. Yeah. We lived in um, Collingwood, and there was this little sideway that went down between our houses, and there were two little gates. And so, at any old time of the day or night, once all... the cask ran out, jumped the fence. <laughs> and they did. Oh, we did. <laughs> it was great times. No, it was um, so. Uh, did everyone else have a, a, a finger in, in writing? Uh, Joey wrote one song and Michael wrote one song. Uh, his song is called Sir Bob, about Sir Bob Goldoff. Oh, OK. Again, just when we thought we didn't swear anymore, Michael's brought in a, a song full of obscenities. <laughs> and it's a great rock song, really. And he sings it, he's never sung before. Oh, so well, I, I, I do sing. Well, in, in, but not uh, in public. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not letting anyone hear him. This is this. This is great. He really, he really rocked out. He's it's, it's taken me three decades to be able to sing a song that Ken's approved. <laughs> <laughs> you really are harsh. Oh, yeah. He's harsh. Hard task. You really harsh. We're going to take a short break, but uh, we'll be back soon with Taste. Yay! Yay! We can oh. finally say it. Taste is back. <laughs> Hi, this is uh, Mick Peeling and uh, this is Mixed Picks on uh, Rockdown. Um, today my first uh, CD, my first pick is uh, this handsome bloke here with a, a, a brand new record that he um, has just released. Uh, Billy Miller I'm talking about of course. Uh, this is the first uh, CD for 15 years. Uh, he's been doing a lot of gigs in between but um, um, he's finally decided to get this one out. It uh, started off probably about uh, 20 or so years ago with the first um, solo album called uh, Yarraville and then shortly after that he released Melbourne and now Australia. It's a, it's a fantastic record uh, featuring uh, performances by uh, Paul Kelly uh, who also co-wrote a couple of songs. Uh, Rebecca Barnard does some magnificent uh, backup vocals on it. Um, Billy's just in fine form. There's some wonderful songs on it. Uh, my pick though is uh, a song called Sold which was uh, written by Billy, uh, plus his uh, old songwriting partner, Martin Falls. A great album, Australia, Billy Miller. Rockdown. Oh, welcome back to Rockdown. This is great fun. We actually are sitting here with half of taste. I never thought I'd hear that. It's a fabulous it's, thing. It's not... Not very often you get Michael out 
out. No, no, he's normally in his jazz clubs with Sting and Prince and that's who he's had at his Well, clubs. it's very nice to have you here, Michael. Well, yeah, I have been known to... Uh, to get out occasionally? And, and, and be in that company. Speaking <laughs> of not getting out, where's Joey? Uh, Joey what's what's his lame here? excuse for not being no, here? No, no, Joey's at home uh, writing a sym symphony for guitars. He's, uh, he's I know he's, I know what Joey's at home doing. Yeah, 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 that's exactly what he's doing. He's sleeping, <laughs> sleeping, <laughs> isn't it? No, he's, <laughs> he's playing incredibly. He's of course, he's, he's never not played incredibly. The greatest guitarist in the world, he, to me. Joey is an amazing, and not just a guitarist, amazing voice. Yep, great oh, singer. Yeah. And as wacky as, and I yeah. love him so much, um, and Kenny before during the break said that we should talk about Joey because maybe we're neglecting him. We love you, Joey. That's right. We do. We never neglect you. No. Uh, he told me to say that. He, Did wanted, he, he wants to get on. He said, talk about me. It's hello from Mitt Tablington. <laughs> um, you've got a new drummer because, of course, Virgil's overseas being a, a big, big star. Yeah. yeah. Um, Tell us about your new drummer. Well, we auditioned uh, quite a few drummers to see um, who would fit because it's not an easy band to be in. It, it's technically really hard, we discovered when we had to relearn the songs. Uh, and so we tried all these drummers and then uh, a, a legend in Melbourne drumming, maybe Australian, uh, Frank Cagnola, uh, who's our age, said, you should try my son, who's 28. Well, the whole family. Yeah. yeah oh, that's Johnny right. Cagnola, Daryl Braithwaite's drummer. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, all, drummer. Drummer. Yeah, yeah, they're all drummers. Mm. They're so, uh, so we tried him and, and he was fantastic. And I, I said to him, why would you want to be He's 28, why would you want to play us? And he said, I, I just love taste because of Virgil. So to play those songs, he already knew them all. And he was the only one who could actually play them properly. So he was, you know, he, he wanted to be part of it. And we, we love him, so it's great. See, I, th I guess a lot of people forget, because when you, when you were kids watching you on television and you had like, a, it was Tickle Your Fancy and mm. uh, rock songs, but poppy rock songs. And yet when you played your sets, it was a very, very full-on, quite heavy rock, and technically um, uh, amazing yeah. rock technically, band. Technically, yeah. 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 So the, uh, on on the Rock Is Dead album, Rock Is Dead itself is in third and eight, which is really hard. A musician will know what I'm talking about. It's really hard. It's very hard <laughs> for me to play it. Too. But, but but those guys, they know what they're doing. So I just I sing it, I let them play. Do you do this? No, I do this. I go I go like this. Da 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 da. Da, 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 da. <laughs> if you watch me, I do that because that's the only way I can do it. That's 13. Yeah, they count. 13. Yeah, they count. But I'm, I, have to have I tell him where one is, but yeah, there's no okay, point. Yeah. There's no idea. idea. He's a musical being, he feels it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So you've got uh, a young Corniola. Yeah, and he, he is really spectacular. All the live gigs, people are coming out and saying, wow, where'd you find this guy? Really good. So um, we've got a tour. Yeah, we're touring Australia uh, wide. Yeah, we're touring Life on Earth, um, uh, Melbourne, Sydney, Perth, Adelaide. Uh, you can see those dates on our um, website and on website. our website. Yeah, too, ours yeah. is www.taste-music.com, um, and that will be to tour the album uh, proper. So I uh, will probably tour with. Uh, uh, we're still talking, but I think Robot Child, who is Walid Ali's band, because we're we're all good friends and we we've done dates with them and they're. We fit really well together, so I think that's who the, the tour will be with. So it'll be good, really good. And probably pick up a few festivals. Really good. Well, all I can say is, guys, I'm so happy. I didn't think I would see this day. Uh, well, and it's I, really, no, it's really wonderful for the Australian music industry because you are incredible musicians and you were then, you still are now. You've got this album out, you've got a couple of clips. Oh, yeah, see yeah, one yeah, tonight. Sure, yeah. uh, would you please thank the boys? Now, while we're going out, Michael and Kenny, do you, have, you have to sign this for us because I get into trouble. They're not chocolates, but I could put some chocolates in there for you. I could put some lollies in there. Oh, if, nice. if you wouldn't mind signing that. Now, while, whilst you're doing that, would you tell us what we're going to be taken out with uh, tonight? Th this, this is a, a world premiere of our new video clip, um, I Am God. These guys are God. Would you thank Chase? Thank you, Rob Bell. Good night. See you next time.
Question: How come all you want? 